we're being asked to find the limit as x approaches 2 and y approaches 1 of this multivariable function here. The first thing you should do when you have a limit is to actually plug in the numbers and see if you get a result. So x is going to be 2 and y is going to be 1. Let's see what happens. So 2 minus 1 minus 1. And in the denominator, we get the square root of, let's see, 2 minus 1. And then here we have a minus 1. This is 2 minus 2. And downstairs, we have the square root of 1 minus 1. So we get 0 over 0. So no good. That does not work. So another good approach uh, is to rationalize. And what tells you to rationalize here is that you have this, this square root here. So it's a good attempt. It doesn't always work. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it will work in this problem. Let's try it. So we're going to take the limit as xy approaches the point 2, 1. And we have x minus y minus 1. And in the denominator, we have the square root of x minus y minus 1. And so to rationalize, we're essentially going to multiply by 1. We're going to multiply by the so-called conjugate of the denominator. That is the square root of x minus y plus 1, and then you divide by the same thing. So you're basically multiplying by 1, so it's like, so it's like you're not breaking any rules or anything. This, this whole piece here, this is equal to 1, so there's no issues at all. And now we use the difference of squares formula, right? You can think of this is a, and this is b. This is a, and this is b. And recall that if you have a minus b times a plus b, that's simply a squared minus b squared. So now we'll go ahead and apply the formula to our limit here. Let me switch to a different color. This is the limit as xy approaches the point 2, 1. Let's be really careful. In the numerator, nothing is really going to happen yet. We still have this x minus y minus 1. Then we have this other piece, the square root of x minus y and then we have the plus 1. In the denominator, that's where the magic happens. So it's a minus b times a plus b. So we square the a. That's going to leave us with x minus y minus, and then we square the 1, so simply 1. And there it is. We get the beautiful cancellation. So this is the limit as xy approaches 2, 1. And we're left with the square root of x minus y plus 1. And at this point, it looks like we can go ahead and just plug in the numbers. So if we plug in x equals 2, we get the square root of 2. Plugging in y equals 1, we get minus 1. And then here we get a plus 1. And so this is the square root of 1 plus 1, which is simply 1 plus 1, which is 2. So going back to the original problem, the idea is whenever you have a limit, you always plug in your numbers first and see what happens. Most of the time, this is going to happen. Uh, if that doesn't happen and you get a result, then that's the answer. Uh, this did happen, however, so we had to try a different strategy. Usually when you have you know, some type of square root and you're adding or subtracting a number, rationalizing is a decent uh, strategy to try. I hope that made sense.